our greatness came and started in Louisville, Kentucky. And that's one of the greatest cities in America, Louisville, Kentucky. Welcome to Louisville, where legacy, tradition, and pride run deep. Where tough, together, unbreakable represents the whole damn city. Our house. Our city. Our time. Because Louisville is the greatest! Signature win for Chris Mack. In this city, defeat has no hold on us. It's our best against their best. There are a lot of teams in this country could stand up to that. Welcome to Louisville. Greatness lives here. Mascots. A person or thing that is supposed to bring good luck. The underdog of sports. These guys bring the fun and entertainment to sports, while also representing the brand they associate with. I should know, because I'm a mascot. Mascots have been around longer than you think they have, since around the late 1800s in the form of live animals and cartoony drawings slash logos. In the 1970s, mascots quickly took off with the popularity of the San Diego Chicken and the Philly Fanatic. But I'm not talking about any of those mascots today. Today, we are once again going back to the Derby City, also known as Louisville. However, unlike last time, we will not be going over to Chuck E. Cheese's. Instead, we will be heading to the University of Louisville, where a certain bird mascot lives, and his name is Louis the Cardinal Bird. This larger-than-life bird has been around Louisville for almost 70 years, delighting sports fans everywhere. In this video, we will be going over the evolution of Louis, from the highs to the lows, from the past to the present. This is the history of Louis the Cardinal Bird, Louisville's beloved mascot. Before we talk about Louis, I want to quickly go over the history of the University of Louisville as well as the Cardinal nickname's origin. The University of Louisville was founded on April 3, 1798, but did not open until 1839, where it opened as the Jefferson Seminary. It was then closed in 1829 before officially opening as the University of Louisville in 1846. The campus is 170 acres and currently has 21,430 students enrolled as of 2021. As for the Cardinal Bird being chosen as the mascot, it wasn't adopted as the mascot until 1913, when Ellen Patterson, the wife of liberal arts dean John Patterson, suggested the Cardinal as their mascot since the Northern Cardinal Bird is the state bird of Kentucky. The colors red and black were supposedly chosen after the Cardinal became the mascot. However, one source claims the colors came before the Cardinal mascot, around 1912 as well as the nickname Cardinals. But these may be a coincidence, or the name and colors were thought of years before. Uh, I, I don't know. Anyway, while the Cardinal Bird was adopted as the mascot in 1913, it would take another 40 years for the university to get a mascot costume. The first known sighting of a Cardinal Bird mascot costume goes back to around 1953 when two female cheerleaders and a male cheerleader named T. Lee Adams went to the office of Frances Goldsmith, also known as Miss Gold, and asked her about a Cardinal suit and if she could make a head. She agreed, and the first bird was born. The costume was very different compared to what we know today. It was mainly a black head with a yellow beak. There was hardly any red at all, Adams later said in a book he wrote many years later. He did, however, wear his red cheerleading sweater, and I'm assuming he wore just regular pants and shoes without anything special since I can't find anything on the whole outfit. 
This is also when they introduced their first logo with a cardinal bird, and as you can see it looks very different compared to what we're used to. It also says Fighting Cardinals, which is what UofL called their team back then. This version was used for the remaining football games and two basketball games before Adam retired from being the Cardinal Bird, due to being teased by fellow students. But I have no idea if this version was used after he stepped down. However, it seems like Louisville did not retire the costume, since I found this photo from 1955, which appears to show the same costume that I just talked about. But as I look more at the photo, I've noticed the costume is different compared to the one that I just talked about, as it does not feature a cheerleading sweater, and it doesn't look black, but rather red. But this is an old photo that's in black and white, so it might have looked different in person. I have no idea how long this version was used, but I know it was retired before 1958, because that's when the next version of the Cardinal Bird was created. In 1958, a few of the UofL marching band members came up with the idea to revive the Cardinal Bird mascot permanently. This time, the Cardinal Bird was made out of paper mache off of a wire frame, and it was built at the University of Louisville Arts Center. This new version was portrayed by drum major Dick Dyson, who was a student at the Speed School of Engineering. He became the first official mascot for the school and debuted at a Louisville Thanksgiving parade. The university also redesigned their logo to be even more cartoony, and they dropped the L and the text reading Fighting Cardinals, leaving just the Cardinal Bird. Like I said earlier, this version of the costume had a paper mache head built from a wire frame, but it also included a pith helmet inside. It also included straps on each side of the head that go under your armpits. The bird also had a long black coat with tails that was given to Dyson by the UofL players. The suit also included a large fabric L that was connected to the head, a white dress shirt and pants, and finally a pair of black shoes with spats on top. He was also given a cane and a white top hat for a few years. There were also times a pillow was used to give him a belly. Unlike the prototype bird from 1953, this costume was a massive success and even joined the cheerleaders at several games and was passed down to many students over the next 15 plus years. I will now talk about three students who played the Cardinal Bird throughout the 50s, 60s, and early 70s. First, there was Sam Badgett, who was the second person to play the official Cardinal Bird mascot. Just like Dyson, he was a student at the Speed School of Engineering. The reason I bring him up is because of a crazy story he told where he had to make a new head out of paper towels before a game against Daytona, when a group of Ohio students destroyed the regular head. Not cool, Ohio students. Not cool. Next, there's Lloyd Collins, a trumpet student at UofL who was originally from Alton, New York. He was the third person to play the Cardinal from 1961 to 1963. He actually played the Cardinal while also playing the trumpet in the marching band. He would perform in the band at halftime and it would immediately go to the locker room to put on the Cardinal suit. Collins has said he lost 5 to 10 pounds each time he performed and that the paper mache head was very top heavy. But the worst part was dealing with the rival fans who would try to fight the Cardinal or try to rip off his head. But it wasn't all bad, he got to perform in Freedom Hall and on the football field multiple times, often with a hula hoop, and on one instance, he laid an egg. Now that's something I gotta see. Finally, there was Lowell Katz, I hope I'm pronouncing that name right, who played the Cardinal Bird from around 1966 to about 1970 or 1971. There's not much information about him that I could find online. But I do know he was very proud to be the Cardinal Bird and even has the head of the mascot on display in his house. And inside are autographs from previous Cardinal Bird performers. Now it's a bit of a mystery when this version of the Cardinal Bird was retired. It might have been retired after Lowell Katz graduated around 1971, or it could have lasted all the way till 1975. But I know it was retired before 1976, since that is when the bird was redesigned again. But before we talk about that version, I want to talk about another cardinal bird that was used during the paper mache era.
Now we all know there's only one cardinal bird that represents U of L, but did you know that there was a second cardinal bird used throughout the 60s? Well, there was. Back in 1962, UofL junior Sally Herman showed interest in being the cardinal bird. However, that job was already taken, so she came up with the idea to create her own cardinal mascot. So she contacted Al Poland, who would later become the cardinal bird a year later, and asked him to help make a cardinal head. The base of the head was a football helmet covered in chicken wire and paper mache. The cardinal was given long eyelashes, perky lips, and an upturned hairdo, just to make it more feminine. She was also given a large tuxedo jacket, a dress, red tights, and white shoes. With all the details added, Lady Bird was ready to make her debut. On Lady Bird's debut, they prepared a wedding for the two mascots that would be performed at halftime in Freedom Hall. And from that day on, she joined the regular Cardinal Bird at every game, entertaining the crowd and was passed on to many other female performers throughout the 60s and into the 70s. Similar to the regular Cardinal Bird, it's unclear exactly when Lady Bird was retired, but I know she lasted throughout the 60s, but it was retired in the early 70s since she was not seen in any photos from that time period. So this concludes the paper mache era of the cardinal bird, and now we are moving into the era of full body cardinals, and the first one we will look at is very obscure. Now there's a reason I call this version of the cardinal obscure bird, and that's because I can barely find any information on this costume, and only two photos of it exist. The first photo shows student Burita Martin putting on the costume. The second photo shows what the costume actually looks like as it consults with cheerleading coach at the time, Cheryl Brackmere. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. We can actually get a good look at the costume here, despite it being an old picture. Now the website I found this photo on says that it's a paper mache costume. But I'm not including it in the paper mache era, but rather, this is the beginning of the full body cardinal era, since it's more than just a head. As for the costume itself, it looks pretty good for a full body costume. I know it looks really creepy now, but back then this was normal. This is also around the time they began to make the mascot resemble the logo, which is very apparent when you look at the logo used at the time this costume was made. The costume itself looks to be made of some kind of material that resembles feathers. I have no clue if these are actually feathers, but it appears to be. It almost kind of looks like a piñata. The body is very round compared to the previous birds, and it looks like the costume didn't have any gloves as the person's bare hands are shown in the picture. The legs seem interesting as, since this is a black and white picture, it appears the cardinal is wearing either tights or very long knee-high socks as they are wearing normal shoes. Kind of wish they had different footwear, but whatever. Also, it appears there's a cheerleader pom-poms on the body. Maybe that's supposed to be the transition of the feathered body to the legs. I don't really know. I don't know why it's here. The real thing people focus on is the head. Like I said earlier, the head is supposed to resemble the logo from the time period, and it does that pretty well. My only complaint is the eyes, as it looks like the Cardinal has seen some things. I can't really tell where the person inside looks out of, it's either the bottom of the beak because it looks darker than the top, or the neck, since that seems to line up with the coach standing next to it. I'm sorry I don't have much information on this costume. It's just so obscure I can barely find anything on it. Hopefully we can find more info on this costume, like who or what company made it, and maybe a picture of it in color. By the way, did anybody watching this go to U of L in 1976 or 1977? Remember seeing this mascot? Were you the mascot? Please let me know in the comments section, I would love to know. Since I can't find any information on this costume, I'm not exactly sure when it was officially retired. Though it had to be around early 1978, since that's when the mascot was redesigned. Which leads us to our next version to look at. And this version is most likely the one you adults out there remember seeing at games. Now the cardinal birds I just talked about were very hard to find when it comes to photos and information, 
But this next version I'm going to talk about and the ones after this are very easy to find info on, since they lasted a long time and are the versions people remember the most. So in 1978, the University of Louisville decided to redesign their mascot to be a lot friendlier and less scary. This version I refer to as Plush Cardinal. As you can see, this version of the Cardinal is very different compared to the previous ones. Gone with the clothes and any form of human anatomy, and say hello to the long shaggy fur, making him look more like a cartoon character straight out of Disney World. Speaking of Disney, doesn't this version kind of remind you of the bird from Aladdin? I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it looks identical, mostly because of the teeth. Oh yeah, this is the first version of the Cardinal to don the famous teeth he is best known for, and he continues to have it to this day. This is also around the time when they redesigned their logo to the now iconic Cardinal with the L shirt and very angry face. I am now going to talk about the costume itself, starting with the head. The head of the costume is a contrast to the logo where he actually looks happy instead of fierce. He doesn't have that much black on his face compared to the amount of red, and looking at this photo from 1978, he appears to have a thick red unibrow. The head also comes to a point on the top instead of looking like a mohawk or bed hair, <laughs> though the point is still rounded and small. The beak is a dark yellow color, with some large spots and a set of pearly whites, which I believe is what the person inside looks out of. Now while I've been praising the head of the Cardinal, I gotta show some love for the rest of the costume, such as the body. I really love the body, because unlike the previous versions, he's actually chubby, kind of like a real bird. And as a fat person myself, <laughs> I love fat mascots because they are the best if the Philly Fanatic is anything to go off of. Anyway, the gloves are just red furry gloves, and he has a red tail with black details on top. And finally, my second favorite part of this costume, his big yellow feet. Previous Cardinal suits had just regular tennis shoes or dress shoes, but this version introduced a shoeless Cardinal and gave him big yellow feet with three toes. As the 1980s came around, Louisville as a school began to grow and expand their basketball and football programs so they could be more widespread. And in 1980, Louisville was so successful in their basketball program, they ended up going into the NCAA championship against UCLA. And of course, the Cardinal Bird was there to see them win. It seems as Louisville grew as a school, so did their mascot program, as the Cardinal began to participate in more activities than any previous Cardinal. Now, I know the other Cardinals did activities too, but this is when the bird began to really do things, such as cool stunts. What do I mean by stunts? Well, he started jumping down from the rafters of Freedom Hall before every game, and even jumped from a WHAS-11 helicopter and landed in Old Cardinal Stadium. Now, whenever they did these stunts, they would have them be performed by a stuntman and not the traditional mascot performer, due to, number one, safety concerns, and number two, because the stuntmen are more educated in these stunts. Also, this has nothing to do with the Cardinal Bird, but while researching this video, I found out about a man named Sadet Acton, I think I'm pronouncing that right, who used to do handstands on the rail of the second floor of Freedom Hall. So that's cool. Another stunt that isn't as dangerous is the cheerleading tower. Pretty much every place that has cheerleaders do this thing where they all stand on each other and form a tower. Sometimes the team's mascot may join the tower, and that's exactly what the Cardinal did. He would get on the top of the tower by having the cheerleaders on the bottom lift him up, and the cheerleaders on the top would balance him by positioning his big yellow feet on their backs. This is also when U of L began doing their iconic card shot where they yell C A R D S and form it with their arms. The Cardinal did this at the top of the cheerleader tower. This version of the Cardinal Bird was received very well as many thought it was an improvement to what had come before it. UofL even has a statue of what I believe is this version. I don't know when it was added, but I found a TV commercial showing it from 1997, so my guess is that it was added in the late 80s or mid 90s, but we're not quite finished yet. Now, if this costume wasn't good enough at first, around 1983 or 1984, the Cardinal Bird received a very minor redesign. Now, this version is not that different compared to the last one, as the only major things changed is the body being rounder, and the black part on his tail being yellow now, but the head received the most amount of changes. 
The head of the costume was changed significantly, now being a lot larger and rounder compared to the previous one. The tip was removed completely and the eyes were made a little bit bigger. The beak was also made brighter and the spots were less visible. He also has even less black around the eyes. This version will be used throughout the 80s and 90s and is the version of the Cardinal many adults watching this remember seeing at games when they were kids. As well as the fact that this is the Cardinal mascot that was used during the era where Denny Crum was the coach of Louisville's basketball team. It also saw many events and games during its lifetime, such as when Louisville played Kentucky for the first time in over 20 years in 1983, as well as when Louisville won their second NCAA championship title against Duke in 1986. One of my favorite moments is when Louisville won the 1994 Metro Conference Championship against Southern Mississippi, and the Cardinal Birds started posing with the trophy and even started kissing it. The Cardinal Bird also started to join the cheerleaders and the rest of the spirit team at the NCAA College Nationals, where he himself would do some stunts, such as the splits and a cartwheel and what whatever this is. For Nationals, the Bird would receive a black top hat and a tuxedo. I will also note that in 1995, the first ever mascot national championship was held, and the Cardinal Bird, who was played by a student named Aaron Flaker, won the title. One last thing I want to mention before I move on to the next costume is I want to talk about the company that made the costume. Unlike the previous costumes who were designed by one person, this costume was designed by the company Stagecraft Inc. Stagecraft Inc. was founded in 1975 and is best known for making mascot costumes for colleges such as LSU, Oregon, and Yukon. The Cardinal costume Stagecraft made for UofL has been used at other colleges such as Ball State University's mascot Charlie Cardinal as seen in this video from the early 2000s. Stagecraft Inc. has a YouTube channel where they upload videos of their costumes, and they have videos of this Cardinal costume in action, as well as a different version with a white beak and black feet. Now, I know these are not the costumes from Louisville, but it has to be from the same mold as Louisville's costume due to how similar they look. I actually reached out to Stagecraft Inc. about their involvement with UofL, and they confirmed that yes, they made the Cardinal suits for Louisville, as well as the next version we will look at soon. This costume that Louisville created had at this point become iconic due to it lasting throughout the years, but all good things must come to an end, and this version of the Cardinal was officially retired in 2000. But not all was bad, as the next version is just as good. Now I'm really excited to talk about this next version since it's the version I grew up with, making it my favorite version of the Cardinal mascot Louisville has done. So in the year 2000, the new millennium, Louisville Athletics went through two changes. First, they changed the logo to be a little bit more modern. This logo is still used today. Second, because there's a new logo, they would need a new mascot to replace the old one. This version I will refer to as Fighting Cardinal. This new cardinal bird was very different compared to any other ones. This cardinal was buff and not as fat as the previous. But at least he still doesn't have any clothes on, and he even has shaggier fur. The head was reduced in size and made to look more like the new logo, which was fierce and not silly looking. He was given more teeth that were not flat, and more black on his face, along with smaller eyes that made him look really angry. Like I said before, the body was thinner and more buff with additional black details on the wings, and yellow legs instead of having the same red fur as the rest of the body. The tail was made bigger, and unlike previous versions, it stood up straight, making it kind of look like a turkey tail. And just like the version from the early 80s, the tail had black details on it rather than yellow. And speaking of yellow, he got to keep his big yellow feet. Just like the plush cardinal from the 80s and 90s, this version has a ton of information, pictures, and videos of it. In fact, it has more information than all of the previous birds combined. For example, we know this costume weighs about 50 pounds and cost about $7,500. This costume was also made by Stagecraft Inc. And if you go to their website, you can see what appears to be the prototype costume. And man, 
It certainly looks different compared to the one we got. There are also about four to five people who portray the Cardinal Bird instead of it only being one person. And I actually know how the costume is assembled, or you know, how to suit up in it. First, you put on a pair of yellow pants to act like the legs, and you strap the tail to your waist. Then you put on a pad to make the bird look more muscular. The red feathers go on next and are zipped up. The feet are put on like a slipper, but you put your actual shoe in it. Then the head, which has a bicycle helmet inside. And finally, the gloves. And just like the last version, this Cardinal Bird still did epic stunts, including parachuting into the newly opened Papa John's Cardinal Stadium before every football game, though he never jumped from the rafters of Freedom Hall. But he did jump from a plane in this one video I found on YouTube. Fun fact, the costume used was slightly different compared to the regular one. The mouth had no teeth, and the hands were not furry. He was also missing a tail in some pictures I found. Despite everything this cardinal bird had, the reactions by fans were mixed. Some loved the new mascot, while others hated it. But in my opinion, this is the definitive cardinal mascot. As much as I love the original plush version, this bird is my go-to when it comes to the Louisville Cardinals. Why? Well, just look at it. It looks exactly like the logo. This version of the Cardinal Bird has been present throughout most of the iconic events that happened with Louisville in the early 2000s. Notable events include several tournaments, championships, Sugar Bowls, and more. Even being presented with the National Cheerleaders Association's Most Collegiate Mascot Award in 2004. This new Cardinal Bird started showing up at Cheer Nationals in 2001, where he wore the same outfit as the plush mascot, except he doesn't have a hat, and he never did any cool stunts. Now at this point, Louisville has made it clear that there's only one Cardinal Bird that represents U of L. However, sometime in the 2000s, the university came up with the idea of a second mascot. Sadly, Lady Bird wasn't brought back for a new generation, but instead, we got something a little bit... bigger. U of L will have a new analyst this coming winter. I'm going to bring him in just for a second. Now he's, he's very short on words, but I get the sense that he's going to tell us exactly where he stands on the issue. This is Mr. Cardinal Bird, Mr. DU. Now, uh, thoughts about U of L football this coming fall under new head coach Charlie Strong? So we got, okay, that, a thumbs up. We have a thumbs up on football. Okay, so uh, the, the other big question, the new arena. Do you like the new arena? You, uh, and, of course, it, your emblem is on the new arena, so I thought, okay. Uh, and basketball, men's basketball, better than, than, okay, awesome, awesome, okay. And you know, one last thing, U of L baseball. Don't know. Got to wait and see. World Series possibility? Okay, all right. All right. You're a man of few words. I, I like this very much. All right, Cardinal Bird, thank you very much for joining us. All right. <laughs> A few years after the introduction of the new Cardinal Bird, UofL decided to make another mascot costume. Well, what would they come up with? Well, this. That's right. Louisville made an inflatable version of the Cardinal Bird, complete with a black shirt with Louisville on the front. Now, inflatable mascots are nothing new. An example are the many, many inflatable mascots used by the NBA. You know the ones. The ones that dance funny and sometimes eat people. Yeah, those are the ones I'm talking about. But don't worry, the Cardinal did not eat anybody. That we know of. This mascot didn't stick around much longer, as it was retired in the 2010s as it was not popular enough to keep around. Now let's go back to the regular Cardinal mascot. It's, big, it's between my heart and my head. I'm going with the head. Give me that Cardinal. <laughs> that was a tough one there. You're going to give the, the Tama chop at the <laughs> Oh, man. As we went into the 2010s, the Cardinal costume was starting to show its age. The fur was all tangled up and falling off, the legs were discolored, and the feet were falling apart. So the university decided to redesign the Cardinal bird and make it look more presentable. Now the changes they made were not major, 
but it was very similar to what occurred in the 1980s when the plush cardinal was redesigned slightly. In 2012, the cardinal bird was redesigned with very little differences. This time the costume was made by the very well-known mascot company, Olympus Group, who has made costumes for other sports teams such as Alabama, Wisconsin, Arizona State, and many, many more. Olympus actually has a video on their YouTube channel where they talk about making mascot costumes, and they show scenes of employees making and designing the Louisville costume. I'll leave a link in the description so you can go check it out. So what changes were made? First, the head was sized up a little bit with a flat pair of teeth and the black part of his head was made to look less angry and a little bit more grumpy. Some say this is a bad change, but I don't mind it since he looks friendlier. The head is also made from a lightweight plastic instead of fiberglass or foam. They toned down the buff parts of the cardinal and made him slightly skinnier, but he's still chubby. The tail received a big change, now looking more like a cardinal tail and less like a turkey tail. And the last change is his feet. They're no longer big and yellow with large toes, but rather reduced and sized, and the toes are a little bit smaller. This was probably done to add less weight to the feet and make it easier to walk in. They also had an opening in the back to slip your foot into. One thing that is important to a mascot is merchandise. Sports teams create merchandise based on their mascots all the time, and Louisville was no different. Even though there was merchandise for the Cardinal Bird back then, it really took off with this new Cardinal Bird. There were dolls, bobbleheads, posters, and even this cute little Lego type figure. I kind of want this. The Cardinal Bird also made a few video game appearances, the most famous of which is in NCAA Football 13, where you can have a team of mascots in the mascot mashup mode. So for Louisville, you could have a team of birds go up against another team's mascot. I actually heard somewhere that they're making a new NCAA football video game, so could this mean the return of mascot mashup? He also appeared in NBA 2K17, but only in the background and he was not playable. Around this time, the Cardinal Bird was officially given a name, Louie, so from now on I will be referring to him as Louie throughout the video, instead of as the Cardinal Bird. The university also tried putting Louie in a jersey. Now Louie has worn jerseys and other pieces of clothing before, such as different colored football jerseys, and this really funny looking baseball jersey. Some do look good, others not so much. He doesn't really look right wearing pants. Sometimes he was given other accessories depending on the event, such as a Santa hat, and okay what is going on in this picture? Seeing Louie in clothes is foreshadowing the future of this character that isn't so good, but more on that later. In 2014, the Louisville Cardinals officially joined the Atlantic Coast Conference, also known as the ACC, and there was a big marketing push to celebrate Louisville joining. One of the ways they celebrated was having all the ACC mascots visit areas of Louisville, such as Churchill Downs, the Louisville Slugger Museum, and of course the University of Louisville. Louie also joined the other mascots outside of Louisville at different ACC events. Louie had at this point also been added into the Louisville League of Mascots, which is a small group of mascots in the Louisville area where they go around the community and even play a type of sport like soccer or football. Also, this is a little random, but I found this video of Louie at a Riff Raff performance where the costume looks to be made of some sort of blacklight material. I don't know if this is the normal costume and the lighting is making it look blacklight, or if it is a new blacklight costume made for this event. Somebody let me know in the comments section down below. I'm really confused by this. Unlike previous versions, there isn't anybody that is important to this version of Louie since multiple people have played him, but here are three people I want to mention in this video. First, there is Jason Wade, who played Louie for four years. I bring him up since he was the person who played Louie in 2004 when he won the Most Collegiate Mascot Award, and I found a newspaper article about him and how being Louie has changed his life. Next is a student named Aaron Huber, who played Louie from the late 2000s to the early 2010s. I bring him up since he did an interview for Inside the Cards where they did a segment on the Cardinal Bird mascot. 
He explains that the costume adds about 20 degrees to what the weather is outside. He also mentions the events he has been Louis, like birthday parties, weddings, and what surprised me the most is bar mitzvahs, where Louis gets to ride in the big chair. I will leave a link in the description to the Inside the Card segment so you can go check it out. Finally, we have a man named Zach Gritter? Grider? I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyway, Zach was one of the many people to portray Louis the Cardinal in the 2010s. The reason I bring him up is mostly because of all the info he has given about the Cardinal mascot. He has written about his experiences as Louis, which I will link in the description below, as I highly recommend reading through it as it gives a good amount of info about the daily life of the Cardinal mascot. I want to summarize some of his stories as the bird, but not completely. For example, he talks about how sometimes there is bad communication with some of the spirit coaches, and how almost two Louis appeared at once. He is also the person who played Louis at the game against Duke, where basketball player Kevin Ware broke his leg in a very painful way where the bone was showing. I remember it blowing up all over the news. He described being about eight feet in front of the accident, and him feeling sick from seeing it from inside Louis, though he tried not to pass out as nobody would, you know, pay attention to him. Another game I want to mention is the All-State Sugar Bowl in New Orleans from 2003, where he made a snow angel out of confetti, as well as the controversial 2013 NCAA championship game against Michigan, where Louisville won, but it was forfeited after some things happened and many people got fired. But I still call it a win for Louisville. He also mentions the many weird and cool experiences he did as Louie, like visiting kids at Cozair Children's Hospital, going to film a commercial at ESPN headquarters, delivering Valentine's Day gifts, and how he had to be Louie at someone's funeral. Yeah, as mascots, you get some weird requests. As time went on, this version of Louis became more loved by many people, but little did we know that his time would be coming to an end, and that day came in December 2016. On December 21st, 2016, Louisville was gearing up for their annual rivalry against Kentucky. But people who watched that might have noticed something different. If you didn't know by now, then I'll tell you. Louis was given another redesign. But you may be thinking, it won't be that bad since the redesigns before improved each time. But let me just show you what he looks like now. What the heck is this? Okay, so when Plush Louie was introduced in 1978, it was a big, nice improvement. And when the Fighting Louie was introduced in 2000, it received a little amount of hate, but it became very beloved. But this? This? You would think they would keep the design consistent with the others, but no. Okay, okay, let's go over the costume piece by piece while I explain my pros and cons. First, the head. The head of the costume was still around the same size as the previous one, which is a pro. But the tip on the head is significantly smaller, almost the same size as Ladybird's head. But at least that fit her, and it doesn't fit this bird, let me tell you that. The beak appears to be smaller and less bulky, but they made the teeth extremely large. This is because that's where the person looks out of. But they made the mesh so thin, it almost appears pink or red from some photos I've seen compared to the previous version. And the bigger grin makes Louie look more evil and less fierce. I wonder how many kids this guy has scared. My biggest problem with the head and the rest of the costume is the lack of shaggy fur, as it's being replaced with some kind of fabric that almost looks more like a blanket rather than fur. The body is the biggest change to the mascot. Now Louie is borderline skinny. It's not like the previous version where he was a mix of skinny and fat. He's just skinny. He almost looks malnourished due to how skinny he is. His arms are the same as the head where they use that fuzzy blanket-like material and they didn't even put black on the wings. And speaking of the wings, why do they look like shark fins? 
That's not what wings look like. The tail is just sad. That's all I'm going to say. At least the gloves look pretty cool. He still has yellow legs, but he no longer has the big yellow feet, but rather a pair of black and red shoes. I actually kind of like these shoes, but I still wish he had the big yellow feet instead. Just like the previous Louis in his last years, this version is forever wearing a jersey, which I guess isn't too bad, but what is bad is he's wearing pants. Come on, Donald Duck, Daffy Duck, the Oregon Duck, and the Hokey Bird from Virginia Tech, they don't wear pants, so why does Louie have to wear pants? Well, maybe that's for the better, because I do not want to see this thing without its pants on. Mm-mm, no, 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 no. Not surprisingly, this version of Louie received immediate negative reactions and an extreme amount of hate. Though there were some positive reactions as UofL started to do more things with Louie than they had before. He was given a t-shirt cannon to shoot t-shirts at the crowd during halftime, along with a drum he could play. The whole point of this redesign was to make Louie more athletic, and they didn't forget their promises. If there's one thing this Louie does right, is he can dunk like a pro. This athletic Louie was also made because UofL began using their Dunking Cardinal logo from the 80s again, by putting it on the center court in the KFC Yum Center. This Louie is also cheaper than the last one, costing about $5,000, as opposed to the previous one costing $7,500. Louie was also given different outfits to wear, and not just a jersey. For example, he would wear a Santa Claus costume during Christmas, and there's even a special Santa Louie photo op at some games. For Veterans Day, he's given a military outfit, and that looks great. And for his birthday, he's given a party hat, and when it's raining at a football game, he gets a poncho. This idea of giving Louie different outfits is pretty cool, and I hope they continue to do it. This Louie also joined the Louisville League of Mascots, and is seen regularly on WLKY, right before each Super Bowl, to play Mascot Bowl. I will leave a link to this year's mascot bowl in the description so you can check it out. It's pretty funny. This version of Louie has also been seen at Louisville Live, which is an event the university has been doing since about 2018, where they announced the lineups for basketball. He even joins the Lady Bird dance team during some of their performances, though most of the time he just stands in front of them staring in awe. Speaking of the dance team, Louis has made several appearances on the short-lived Lifetime TV series, So Sharp, which is a series that shows how the Louisville Ladybird team prepares for performances. While Louis is obviously not the main focus, he still shows up in just about every episode, and you can even see him in the background with his head off if you look closely, though it's only in the backstage area, of course. This version of Louis started showing up at Cheer Nationals in 2017, where at first he wore the tuxedo, just like the plush and fighting cardinal birds. But in 2019, he was given regular clothes and boxing gloves? On the subject of cheer competitions, I found this video of the spirit team rehearsing from around 2019. Pay attention to the guy in the gray shirt. That's Louie. However, unlike the previous versions, this Louie received very little merchandise, if any as most of the new merch that has come out since the new Louis debut has been of the old Cardinal design. Clearly, somebody likes the old one more than the new one. The only piece of merchandise I could find is this really cool comic book cover from 2018. You see, Marvel and ESPN are both owned by Disney, and so during the college football season openers, they commission posters designed to look like comic book covers. So this poster is parrying the Iron Man comic book 66 cover from 1974, but instead of Iron Man and Thor, it shows Louis the Cardinal and Big Al, the mascot of Alabama, who will definitely be getting his own history video soon. Now it's a bit of a mystery about what company made this costume. I'm not actually sure who made it, and I can't find anything online. It was definitely not stagecraft. It might have been Olympus? but I don't know. One final thing to mention about this costume is beginning around late 2019 and early 2020, Louis stopped wearing his cool red and black shoes and instead wearing normal sized human shoes and long socks, just like what the athletes wear. I really don't like this design choice made. Mascots are supposed to have larger features than humans, 
This does not work. So after looking at the pros and cons and after saying everything I have to say about this version of Louie, do I really hate it? No. I don't hate it. I just think Louisville should have stuck with their already perfect costume. But I'm not the only one that thinks this, as even to this day, people are still calling for the previous Louie to be brought back. But even if old Louie isn't brought back anytime soon, the memories of him will live on. And there you have it, the history of the most popular mascot in the city of Louisville, Louis the Cardinal Bird. I know this video was really long as there was a ton of information on the different Louis, and I just tried to put it all in one video. But if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section down below. Please like, share, subscribe, and put in the comments section what was your favorite version of Louis. I'm sure you all know which one's my favorite as I already said it multiple times. Also, let me know if there are any other college mascots you want me to make history videos on. Just don't say the Kentucky Wildcat, because I have forbidden myself to do that one. But every other mascot I will happily do. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I will see you all next time on the History Of series. Bye bye Alright guys, hope you had an awesome time with us at the University of Louisville. Thanks for joining us here in Kentucky. I'm Nicole. I'm Shayna. And this is Cardinal Bird. Bye. L1C4. B7. You know I had to do a remix, right? <laughs> but anybody in front of us, we guarantee to win. Look your dead in your eyes. Don't step on that court unless your face like mine. If you don't plan on getting wetted up, don't line up on that line. Send y'all to the grease here with another L on that record. Oh, y'all going ham? I make y'all my dessert. My whole team been in a split, y'all. Your whole squad is chopped the cake. You can go and whine to the refs. I told y'all, y'all a bunch of great. Huddle up, cut a blade, smack the ball, throw the ball, penetrate, back up, look away, head fake, trade ball, celebrate. Ball back, we got a point to prove. Balling like we got nothing to lose. Yeah, I got your number. Keep your phone on, I'ma call this dude. Coach said this was my year, and I told him I agreed with him. Not the only thing he gotta worry about was when the Hall of Fame gon' come get him. But anybody in front of us, we guarantee to win. Look you dead in your eye, I'm coming for the ring. You don't want no part of us, you ain't got enough heart. Better throw your hand in, cause you don't want these cars. 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 It's about to get ugly. This season about to be crazy. You can go and set that press up. None of that don't faze me. We filling up these stands. You don't hear these fans. They jumping out of their seats. Hell raising their hands. Too loud in here. We got a crowd in here that's just waiting to rush that court. I don't know about all your teams. We balling a sport. Coach said this was my year. And I told him I agree with him. Now the only thing he got to worry about is how good that white suit fit him. But anybody in front of us, we guarantee to win. Look you dead in your eye. I'm coming for the ring. You don't want no part of us. You ain't got enough heart. You better throw your hand in. Cause you don't want these cars. 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 I hope you plan on lose. Cause we don't, we don't, cause we don't, we don't, cause we don't. If I was you, I just give it up. Give it up. Cause we won't, we won't, we won't, we won't, we won't.
Yeah, that's right. You don't want these calls. I go by the name of BSI2M. BSIM. There we go. That's the first piece of concept art from my Louie costume. Because I think I'm going to start making replicas of mascot costumes. Wait a minute. I think I left something in the basement. Ah, yes, it's my water bottle that got me through this entire video. Oh, oh crap. Hey, what are you doing here? I forgot to put you away after I did my last video. Maybe I'll do something else with you. I don't know. Maybe. Whatever. Alright, that's a wrap, folks.